Hello my loves, welcome back to Zeke's Lunchbox. Today I will be working on a tarot card. If you are new here and you are unfamiliar with the tarot card project, I am working on the Zeke's Arcana tarot project where I will be painting all 78 tarot cards and there will be a physical deck by the end of this project. At the moment I'm working my way through the Major Arcana. In the Major Arcana there are 22 cards and I'm about 15 or 16 cards in at the moment. So if you wanna catch up with the whole project. I've got the whole process documented in a playlist down below so you can catch up on the project if that's of interest to you. Otherwise, this video. I've been recording this video for a couple of months because I've been going back and forth and starting and stopping with this piece. If you are new here, I constantly talk about how I'm really terrible at landscapes and environments and this piece has been incredibly challenging because I had to hero a landscape. I think it's safe to say that the process that I've had with this piece has been pretty unusual, mostly because I was kind of learning on the job. Anyway, you guys will see. I've um I've recorded this intro so many times throughout the month. Hello, my loves. Hello, my loves. Hello. Uh, because there's just been so many different evolutions of this card and the whole mindset and process that I went through. I hope that's relatable to you guys if you're stuck and you're really unsure about how to continue in a piece. Yeah, I just hope this video helps you and encourage encourages you to experiment and grow and challenge yourself. It's hard. I felt like I had a lot of hissy fits along the way. Before we head into the video, make sure you like and subscribe if this video helps you in any way and I don't know, you find it useful for, for your own art process, make sure you like the video. So let's go back to November, I think. Okay everyone, I'm gonna deep dive into the piece now. I have traced the sketch that I did on the iPad Pro from paper and now I've put it onto this paper using my light box. This beautiful thin <laughs> light box. By the way, I have a link to this if you've been searching for a light box for yourself. Yeah, I feel grossly underprepared. I am on a time crunch to get two more cards done by the end of the year. So if I do get to a stage where I feel like I can't quite work out what's happening, I'll probably go back to my sketchbook, do a little study or a couple of studies and then go back to the final piece. Wish me luck. everyone. I haven't done much since the very first session. First session wasn't even, I'd consider that even a session. That was kind of me like farting around. Just placed like one layer so far to kind of like see what tones of purple I wanted to use and what tones of blue I wanted to use. Trying to figure out exactly the colors I'm using so there is a nice gradation between the two. With landscapes I kind of, I normally like paint around a lot of very specific things but because the forms don't necessarily matter too much. No one's going to notice if a tiny little rock is a slightly different shape, like who cares? So I was a little wary about like erasing or going over details like this because I just wasn't sure like when I would plop them in. I don't know. What is most paramount is getting a really good background because that is literally half the piece. So the sky has to be like... I also have sketched out my card to be a landscape with like a, it's meant to have like a really wide looking lens. That's the perspective that I've taken on with this piece just to give it a little bit more interest. So the sky also has to kind of have a slight bend in it. It can't just be like straight. So I'm gonna try and work that out today using the same brand I always do, Matisse Structure Acrylic. This is an Australian brand, but I will have a link in the description if you guys are interested it's the only paint I use. It's got a high viscous texture to it, so it has a little bit of a slower drying time, but not that much. I just find that the pigment is like creamer. So I'm using a, oh my God, how do you say phthalo again? Phthalo blue. Phthalo blue. Phthalo blue. 
phthalo blue, tomato, tomato, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. So I'm using that blue for the base. I like a lot of phthalos because they do have quite a range in being very dark and then also very light. There's just something about them that's just super juicy. So I really, really love using phthalos. So using that for the bottom of it. And then I'm also using a mix of these two colors for the purple, but I'll be going back and forth between these three colors to make the background. Hello everybody, 26th, the 26th of February. I have been meaning to make this video for three months. I started painting this card in December of 2019. I've just been procrastinating heaps hard. Ooh, 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 hmm, that's kind of cool. Anyway, sorry, whoa. I bought like, I bought these like mirrors ages ago and <sighs> a bunch of stuff so I could play around with like b-roll and you know be creative with photography and stuff anyway wow I am procrastinating so hard on even talking about this card because that's how much I don't like doing landscapes I'm just really not good at them I've been procrastinating on doing this card for three months I've been meaning to film more of this study sessions video for the last three months in that time I have just worked on other cards because I got to a point where it was like I don't know what I'm doing I actually don't know what I'm doing I need to step back and do some studies because I don't understand originally in my sketch I didn't have sand dunes in it but when I was starting to paint it just wasn't working and it needed something in it so let me show you what studies I've been doing I'll also take you on the journey of me doing some studies as well just doing these rock studies landscapes heavily rely on texture getting the texture just right all of that has to come in consideration when doing a landscape. I don't do a lot of like really heavy dramatic lighting and I think a lot of landscapes really depend on it to make them interesting especially the piece that I'm currently working on it's all about like really dramatic lighting and it's just not my strong suit I'm just doing some studies and before I really sink my teeth into it because I just don't know what I'm doing <sighs> I'll chat to you next when I'm working on this, hopefully in a couple of days. The tower is a card that I have designed to be completely devoid of people. I want it to feel really ominous and threatening. It is exactly what that card is meant to represent. It just has to be a desolated place. That's the way that I've envisioned the card and it's really hard for me to hero and make a piece devoid of humans a really high acceptable place. Yeah, it also has to be something that matches all the other the cards and is to that level as well. Okay, let's go on this journey. I've been chipping away at this, but I haven't had like long periods of time, a full day to just have no other activity or task. But the couple of little scribbles that I have done, I think have made a really big difference. Like adding some more depth in the split of the tower, adding uh, the initial layers of the green haze around. Um, I've also pumped up the warm hues of the top part where the purple is. So I've added a little bit of pink. I just feel like it just adds a slight little oomph, a bit of pot. So it's starting to be really vivid, which I'm actually quite excited about because it is quite a blocky piece. I think the saturation of color is really paramount. Now that I'm starting to see that build, it's yeah starting to get very exciting. When it comes to painted clouds, I don't think anyone does it as beautiful as Studio Ghibli. So I went through and looked at a bunch of Ghibli clouds and I was like, 
oh, this is perfect. So this is the image that I'm going to use as what I'm going to like refer back to. If you've only ever thought of referring your work to photos, start looking at some paintings and like really analyze what colors they've used, what kind of like brush strokes they've used. It really, really helps. I know that's kind of obvious, but you know, sometimes you, when you're painting, you forget. Yeah, not much else to report, except that I just need to get a move on with it. So we'll do that later today. Okay, you guys, we did it. I'm so happy that I just pushed through and... Uh, did you think this video was done? Well, guess what? It's not. We're gonna animate this mother fluffer. Oh, yeah, crazy. I wanna play, I wanna experiment. I wanna see what this looks like coming alive. Let's do it. That or just share the tie face with me? Because have you like adjusted the kerning or anything on the tie? What's adjusting the kerning mean? Okay, okay, enough fun and games. Enough of the riffraff. Please enjoy this animation that Rel and I concocted, mostly on Rel's behalf, to be quite frank. You can follow Rel on rel.fam on Instagram if you want to see more of his animation work. And yes, I present to you 